Welcome to Sunday at 10. And if you're joining us for the first time, or you're with us every week, we're glad that you're here, and you're very, very welcome. In these next few minutes, we hope that we're going to speak with God as we pray, and hear from Him as we read His Word and reflect upon it. This is a space to be refreshed, encouraged, and challenged by the God who's always there, who never changes, and whose love for us is certain, even in these challenging and uncertain times. So let's pray together. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realise that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Do you know what I could hear in the background as that passage was being read to us? A clock ticking. When I hear Jesus' final hours with his disciples told, in John's Gospel, I always hear a clock ticking in the background. And yes, I know that's historically impossible. Because of all the Gospel writings, this section of John's Gospel is the most intense. Jesus speaks to his disciples and that clock ticks away the seconds until the last stage of his journey to the cross begins. And it's through that intensity that I feel Jesus is almost speaking directly to me. <clears throat> and what's he saying? Well, I think the first thing to notice is how the passage is topped and tailed by linking love and obedience. Love is shown by honouring Jesus' teaching, his clear directives about loving God, loving our neighbour, loving one another and about humility. And that language of obedience and command in the context of love might well feel strange. Dare I say it's more Donald Trump than Jacinda Ardern. But then it is softened by the promise that Jesus then makes. A promise that he'll be with his people from that day to this. Why? He even tells his disciples that things will be better in this new order of things, that they and we will achieve things that he couldn't. What? And this will happen because through the Father he sends his spirit, the spirit of truth. And so the passage ends with an amazing circle of promises that we will see him and be alive with him in this new life and that through his resurrection 
Jesus will be in the Father, we will be in Jesus, and he will be in us. Father, Son, Spirit and us in communion. A divine community. And if we leave it there, then that all feels very nice, really. God, Jesus, the Spirit, you, me, in some kind of super lovely holy bubble. <clears throat> but we can't leave it there. We could structure an entire year's course, I think, on the word used to describe the Spirit in this section of John's Gospel. But we'll keep it short. It's most commonly translated as advocate or helper or comforter. And all of those suggest that somehow all is not going to be plain sailing. Neither the original disciples nor we who follow in their footsteps are destined for a life in a super lovely holy bubble. The text highlights a sharp difference between the world and the disciples. Twice Jesus speaks of a world that doesn't see of a world whose ways were different from the disciples' ways. And today, that difference is just as stark. In the last 70 years, society's understanding of what is important, of what it values, has sadly grown ever more distanced from Christian roots and values. So our response to Jesus' command must be to play our part in closing that gap. And I'm certain that our current situation here in the UK offers an opportunity for this. I'm sure that most, if not all, of your church families have in the past eight weeks developed a strong sense of community dare I say, a stronger sense of community since lockdown began. We have learned anew what it means to be a community. And on a bigger scale, the Thursday night applause for the National Health Service has revived a sense of community in closes, avenues, streets and roads throughout the United Kingdom. The nation has relearned what it means to be a community. And now those communities are taking the first teetering unsure steps towards a more open existence, shaking off the simplicity and restrictions of lockdown for the ambiguity that accompanies any degree of freedom. And we're all part of that as individuals and as church. And now is the time to work out in our local context how we obey Jesus' commandments, how we show love for one another, how we show love to our communities through service, how we identify the needs of our local communities that we as a church can meet, how we do that humbly, and so how we help others to see Jesus and to take their first steps in a journey of faith. This will be about more than just opening the church doors again at some point this year. It's about how, in our actions, our behaviour and our testimony, we enable people to see Jesus. How we obey him, because we love him. And all the while, that clock continues to tick in the background. Goodbye.
Lord God, we thank you that however anxious, isolated or alone we may feel at this time, that we have the promise of your Holy Spirit to assure us that we are never alone. That just as you promised your disciples, we have a comforter and counsellor who dwells in us and journeys through life with us. Help us to learn to be aware of your presence with us and may your spirit be our guide, turning our attention to your son and reminding us that we are eternally loved. Heavenly Father, while acknowledging the reality of the current situation, the difficulties, fears, challenges, and for some the sadness of loss, we ask that you would help us not only to add up our troubles, but also to count our blessings. We thank you that even amid this present darkness that you are a good God, that you love us, that you are for us and not against us, and that nothing, to borrow some words from St Paul, can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Help us to hold on to the promises you give us and to know that we're held in your love. The scriptures encourage us to pray for our leaders and those in authority. And so we lift before you now the politicians, our prime minister and government, the opposition parties and all in parliament, the scientists and medical advisors, to give wisdom and clarity of thought to them. May their decisions be wise, may lives be saved, and help us all as individuals to take seriously our responsibilities to behave with regard for others around us, especially those who are most vulnerable. We thank you for the Christian witness of our Queen and ask that you would bless her as she continues to undertake her duty with diligence and dignity. Lastly, Lord, we pray for ourselves and those we love, our families and our friends and ask that in this week ahead we may be worthy representatives of your Son. May our words and deeds reflect your character and love, and help us to set aside time to listen to your voice, to read your word, and to communicate with you in prayer over this coming week. And we ask all of these things for the sake of your kingdom and glory, and bring them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and those you love, now and always. Amen. <laughs>